I think it is a multidimensional problem, or rather uh, it requires multidimensional efforts depending on the market that we consider. For uh, grid integrated systems, uh, there are two fundamental issues. The first one is cost reduction, which means that technology manufacturers, project developers have to make further effort to reduce the unit cost of the technology. Second, there is the issue of grid integration. Usually grid operators don't like renewables because they're non-dispatchable. Therefore, any effort in the direction of further uh, improving the interconnectivity of the grids will actually reduce the consequences of that non-dispatchability of electricity, of renewable electricity. Then there is a market of grid systems, uh, systems for remote applications. In that case, the problem is completely different. First of all, cost is not that important compared to fossil fuel technologies because renewables may be the only alternative. Think about a remote village in Africa. So in that case, the first problem is how do you get the product there? So it's an operational problem. Second, there is the issue of financing the purchase of those systems. And in that case, we need models, intelligence schemes to help the relatively poor people with very limited means to spread out the investments uh, over a larger number of years and uh, make those technologies affordable for them. My colleague Sam Flaki, over the last couple of years, we have uh, studied a large number of different mechanisms to support the diffusion of renewables. And in fact, our results uh, confirm that this is a multidimensional effort. Over the past few years, uh, renewables have been primarily accelerated by the implementation of feed-in tariffs. These are clearly demand pool policies that create artificial markets or niche markets where renewables are protected from competition. However, those efforts stimulate the diffusion of existing technologies. Basically, companies pick the low-hanging fruits. So that is not enough to promote the development of renewables in the long term to stimulate technological breakthroughs. And to do that, you do need policies and mechanisms to support fundamental R&D. That can be done uh, at the policy level through public interventions. But also, uh, we found that there is a remarkable um, contribution of economic growth which not only, as people believe, lead to diffusion of fossil fuel technologies, actually, but stimulates investments in renewables. So it's a combination, again, of um, three uh, fundamental uh, drivers uh, that drive the diffusion of renewables. It's demand pool policies for the low-hanging fruits and the diffusion of current technologies, uh, technology push efforts, R&D, and economic growth. I see primarily uh, two areas of opportunities for renewables or for businesses in the area of renewables. First of all, um, I believe that the new energy system is going to be completely transformed by the introduction of uh, decentralized generation uh, and distributed generation systems. That means that the utility of tomorrow will look more like Google than like the utilities that we know today. That leaves room to uh, a lot of small aggressive, intelligent, innovative firms that can provide services not only in the generation of electricity, but most importantly in the provision of services associated with that. And I'm thinking about ESCOs, energy service companies, I'm thinking about services in grid integration, in energy efficiency, and perhaps in the integration of electric vehicles into the grid, which is a major opportunity for reducing CO2 emissions in the medium to long term. Second, obviously, we have opportunities for investors. And I see a number of venture capitalists trying to uh, identify the new uh, black swan uh, in the um, renewable energy sector, promoting and supporting uh, inventors, supporting radical innovations. And I heard recently that there were a few developments in the sector of organic cells for PV that seems very promising. Clearly, those opportunities are uh, tremendous for the investors who have, you know, the. Uh, stamina, who have the courage, the ability uh, to uh, basically handle the risk. I have expectations, but I have hope about the COP21. I mean, what we saw in the past is that the stability of the political and regulatory framework is fundamental to accelerate renewables. So any policy which is fluctuating over time or changing every two or three years, usually kills renewables. Uh, we saw that in Spain, where uh, very generous feed-in tariffs have been suddenly removed from the government. We saw the same in Italy, and that basically killed the entire PV industry in Spain. So I hope that uh, we can reach an international agreement, uh, which, if not perfect, could be at least stable enough and sustainable enough to create the stable framework that 
investors and operators need in that industry to develop their systems and to uh, plan for long-term investments.